Just have your way in us. Come, my beloved, come, O breath of God, from the four ends of heaven. Breathe on the slain so they'll live again. Just drag your finger back just a little bit on it. Hallelujah. See if you're 37 and 9. Oh, come. Oh, breath of God, come from the forests of heaven. Breathe on the dead so they can live again. Tell him, come, come. Lift your hands. Tell him, Holy Ghost, come, come. Tell him, Holy Ghost, you're welcome. Come, Lord. Bring bones together. Put the bones back in their place. Bring order, God. Oh, so an army can stand up in these last days. Oh, yeah, Lord. Before Ezekiel ever said anything to the flesh, he spake to the wind. And Holy Ghost, before we speak to the flesh of men, we speak to you and we welcome you to come. sound of your going in the mulberry trees your wind blowing your Holy Ghost moving only then can we but disturb ourselves and enter into the enemy's camp and see an enemy defeated and reap the spoil when you hear the sound of my going tops of the mulberry tree but stir yourself and go into the enemy's camp for I will be went before you 2 Samuel 5 24 think about how much energy we waste how many battles and fights we fight that are not ours because we just don't discern the wind drag your finger back just a little bit again holy yeah wind of God Come, Holy Ghost, on the forest of heaven, Lord of hosts. Come, Spirit of life. For God, you said in Romans 8 and 2, you are the Spirit of life. Where you come, Holy Ghost, death is removed and life becomes reality. My love of us. Until the Spirit of the Lord be poured out from upon you. And the wilderness become a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a harvest. Isaiah 32, 15. Holy Ghost, until you come, the wilderness will stay just that, a wilderness. When you come, you'll turn it into a place that used to be barren and empty to a place that's barren and fruitful. Bearing fruit. Where death was, life will take its place. That'll be all. Come on, lift your hands to him and welcome him tonight. Hallelujah. Whew. By the Spirit of the Lord have I been made. And by the breath of the Almighty have I been made living. Job 33, verse 4. Holy Ghost, it is you that divinely designed our person curiously wrought in the secret places of the womb. And before you formed us in the womb, you said, I knew thee and ordained thee a prophet. You said to Jeremiah and to the nations, Jeremiah 1 5. Before you ever formed the flesh, God, you created a spirit. That is the very one you said you knew. Hallelujah. Our life didn't start when our mother pushed us out in that labor ward where she was birthing us. Lord, we were created in the very heart and mind of God. You made our spirit and then you used the substance of our father in connection with our mother's womb. And then you begin to form our sex and form our person and form our flesh. But before all then, in the spirit we were. 
For you declared in your word in Ecclesiastes 11 and 5, even as you do not know the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with a child, so do you not understand the works of God who maketh all. Ecclesiastes 11 and 5. God, that scripture lets me know that the spirit came before the bone. The spirit was created. Therefore, at conception and even before, it's life. It's not just some little fetus. Hallelujah. God, that child existed in you before you ever formed the bones. Even before the heart was heard beating. Even before you could see the facial features and its little toes and fingers were seen. Lord God, as the doctor showed the mother on that monitor. Even before all that, in the spirit. In the spirit. God, our life started in the spirit. Our life began in the Spirit. And Lord, you said again in Job 33 and 4, By the Spirit of the Lord have I been made, and by the breath of the Almighty have I been made living. Holy Ghost, it is you that made us. Spirit, soul, and body, you are the one that divinely designed each and every one of us. And you didn't make a mistake. You made one a male, you made another a female, but you made them both. You didn't mess up. Mm, hallelujah. You said you'll have this color skin and you'll have that color skin. You made us all. Hallelujah. And you said you did it by your Holy Ghost. Lord, if we started in the Spirit... Lord, I understand tonight it's very important that we get reacquainted with the Spirit then. With capital S, the Spirit of the living God. Come on, lift your hands to the Holy Ghost. He's the one that made you. He knows you better than you know yourself. Psalms 139 and 1 said, He has searched me and He knows me. Come on, just lift your voice up to Him and praise Him that He knows you. He knows what you have need of before you can even ask him, Matthew 6, verses 8. You can't let him know something that somehow he don't know about. He knows you. All the while my breath was within me, the spirit of the Lord was in my nostrils, Job 27 and 3. Come on, everybody's already doing it, but do it again. Come on, breathe in through your nose. I get 100% cooperation right here on this. Come on, breathe in. Not you'll die. Come on, breathe. Somebody say that's just how close he is. You couldn't do that without him. Job said all the while my breath is in my nostrils as it's going through my nasal cavities. The spirit of the Lord is in me. My God, have mercy. God, you scooped up that clay that you made into a man and called Adam, and you breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and that man became a living soul, Genesis 2, 7. Hallelujah. God, I pray tonight we would have an encounter with the Spirit of God, with the breath of God. Hallelujah. To the very one bring us back to him, that one that made us. Hallelujah, that created us, that designed us, who knows us, bring us back to Holy Ghost. God, in the beginning, you created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Holy Ghost moved on the face of the water, and you said, let there be light, and you saw the light, that it was good, and you divided the light from the darkness, Genesis 1, 1 through verses 4. Lord, in the beginning, you created. In the beginning, your spirit moved on what you created, and in the beginning, as he moved, he said, and what he said brought light and divided the darkness. Holy Ghost, when you come, 
come. It may be empty. It may be void. It may have no shape, no life, no light. Hallelujah. But when you come, it has purpose. When you're allowed to come where darkness is, it's dispelled. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And light takes its place where death is, life comes. Hallelujah. Where hopelessness is, hope comes. Where unbelief is, faith comes. For you said in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, you're the spirit of faith. So Holy Ghost, I welcome you, my beloved, tonight to come. Because I know if a life is changed, if a life is redeemed, if a body's healed, if a devil's evicted, if a mountain's moved, Holy Ghost, it'll be you that's responsible. And before you made the earth, you made the heavens. You created the spirit before you ever did anything in the flesh. And Lord, tonight our answer is not from the flesh. It's from the Holy Ghost. Lord, I'm reminded in Luke 1, 34 and 35 when Mary asked Gabriel, the angel, how shall this be seeing that I know not a man? She had a question. She wanted to know how you're going to do this. How you going to give me a baby? I don't even have a husband. How is this going to happen? And Lord, you replied through your messenger, Gabriel, the angel of God who stood in your presence. A word from your presence, and it was this, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you in the power of the highest shall overshadow thee and the holy thing that will be conceived in your womb shall be called the son of the most high Lord you answered her how with one answer Holy Ghost Holy Ghost you're still the answer you are do we have all the answers yes Holy Ghost him. Hallelujah. Lord, forgive us for trying to do even what you've called us to do without the Holy Ghost. We repent, Lord, tonight and help us not only turn from but turn back to some things that's been discarded. Holy Ghost, and to keep those things and to preserve those things. Holy Ghost, help us come back to your move. To come back to total dependency upon your anointing, upon your power and your person. Hallelujah. For Lord, many in these latter times have put their hope and their faith, Lord God, in creeds and doctrines and, and formulas. And, and just religion and, and even some of these things and traditions and even some may be even respectable but Lord God hallelujah may the church return to put her faith back in Holy Ghost in the spirit of God his doing for Lord God without you Holy Ghost moving we're only cloning church members we're not seeing sinners converted into saints without you for you said in John 3 and 8 born of the spirit that's very clear Lord God no one can be born again no one can be saved without the Holy Ghost bringing them to Jesus for the words you speak master you said they are spirit and they are life and you said the spirit quickens and the flesh profits nothing John again chapter 6 verse 63 Lord God without your spirit they're only clones church members when you touch a heart when you come Holy Ghost when you're allowed in your gifts in your move in your supreme in the place Lord when that heart's touched it will be changed they were an alcoholic they won't be no more not once one, always one. That's what the flesh in the world says. But God, you said in 1 Samuel 10 and 6, the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. 1 Samuel 10, 6, Holy Ghost, wherever you're allowed to come and to touch, you turn that life inside out. You change them from glory to glory even by the Spirit of the Lord. Corinthians 3 and verse 18 only you can do that so who are we your people the church who are we to think we can have those results without you 
Lord, I pray tonight we forget every way we've done it up until now. Bring us into the spirit. But you said in Revelation 1 and 10, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice like as a trumpet. Lord, he could not hear you except in the spirit. There's no audience with this God without the Holy Ghost. You said, wherefore today, if you'll hear the voice of the Holy Ghost, Hebrews 3, 7, Lord, that is your voice. It's Holy Ghost that does the speaking, the preaching, the talking. If it's from you, it comes by Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And Lord, tonight, as much as we may think we need something from you, above what we need from you, we need you. We got to have you. Search us, O oh God. Let us pray as Jesus taught in Luke 11 and 13. If ye then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost unto those who ask him? Lord, we lay every prayer aside. We, we lay every supplication and petition aside. What we really think we have need of tonight. And we confess our one need that's above any of these and it's a need for you Holy Ghost come we ask for you we ask for you we don't just ask for a miracle and a virtue from your him your H-E-M we ask for H-I-M him Holy Ghost we desire you we wait upon you it's you we need above any other need we may have we need you because every need we'll ever have need of, Lord God. It'll be met in you, in the Spirit. And Lord God, if we're going to hear what you're saying to the church, you said throughout all seven churches in the book of Revelation 2 and 3, let him that has an ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Come on, lift your hands and say, Holy Ghost, help me to hear what you're saying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name and God's people said, amen. You can be seated if you're standing. What an honor it is to be in his house anywhere, hallelujah, especially in his presence anywhere. But it is, amen, a privilege of ours to be here tonight with your pastor and his wife. Thank you, Brother Joey. Hallelujah for inviting us. Glad to see my mother, my beautiful wife, my son, my daughter, and niece, those friends of ours, and those from Acts 29. Church unto God where we pastor, amen. You met Pastor Michael, his wife, and mother's here, amen, tonight. Brother Jeff, Sister Jan, Sister Melissa, good to see you all with us tonight. Brother Jeff, I'll get, if you want to come, you can come. If you can come sit up here anytime you get ready, amen. Praise God, if you feel led, hallelujah. Because I'm kind of like Elisha when the minstrel plays, the hand of the Lord comes on me, amen. Second Timothy or Second uh, Kings 3.15. But it is our delight to be in the presence of the Lord here tonight. Take your Bibles. And turn with us to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Hallelujah. The book of Revelation chapter 3. And while you're turning there, 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 and 2 said the Spirit. Somebody shout, that's capital S. That means Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Speaks expressly in the latter times that many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils having their conscience seared with a hot iron, speaking all lies and in hypocrisy. Again, that's 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 and 2. Some ought to say the Holy Ghost expresses himself in the latter times, speaking like at no other time. And he's declaring many will depart from the faith. He didn't necessarily say they'd depart from the pew. They would depart from their chair at the church service or even from their pulpits or their positions of ministry where their title is. But he said they would depart from the faith, meaning there's a defection from faith in God that is true according to this book, which is our article of faith. There's a lot of false doctrines being preached today. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. There's a lot of stuff, uh, amen, that sounds good, but is not sound doctrine. 
And doctrine is very important because God said in Luke 4 and 32, Jesus declared, or they said about Jesus, they said they were astonished at his doctrine, what he taught, hallelujah, because, amen, he taught as one with authority. His word was with power. Hallelujah. So what you're teaching is very important. And God said the Holy Ghost warned that in the latter times they would be heresies. They would be false doctrines. And he said it would be doctrines of devils. Meaning demons, amen, are actually causing what's coming forth. And some of these uh, false things that's coming out, hallelujah, it would be demonic. Meaning devils can talk. Hello, somebody. Even demons can have little charisma. Hey, man, praise God about their delivery of what they're saying. Remember in 1 Kings chapter 18, the Bible said that Saul, the demons were in him, and David strummed his harp, and he often tried to uh, uh, put David to the wall with his javelin as he would throw it at him, and David would avoid out of Saul's presence, uh, and the javelin would miss him because David was a worshiper. Look at your neighbor see if you'll learn how to worship. A hey, some stuff that you'll avoid. A hey, some stuff that the devil will throw at you that'll miss. Come on, somebody. It won't never hit you if you'll learn how to worship. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. But David, amen, was eyed by Saul from that day forward. First Samuel 18 and 9. In other words, the enemy says, David, you're my target uh, because the Spirit of God had left Saul. He's a topology of Satan. And now the Spirit of God's in David. Amen. And Saul sees in David what he used to have. Hallelujah. And so he eyes David. And the Bible said something very specific here in 1 Samuel 18 and 10. It said that King Saul, while David was worshiping. Now we know David was a true worshiper. Amen. Even in Revelation chapter 3, it talks about, amen, that he, the key of David, about his key and how, amen, and how David worshiped, praise God, amen. We know he was in the spirit, but in the same place where David was in the spirit, we find Saul, demon possessed, and the Bible said he was prophesying. He was demon possessed, Pastor Joy, but he was still prophesying. In 1 Samuel 10, 6, he was prophesying when the Spirit of God was on him. So it weren't revelation that he was operating out of. He was operating out of remembrance. He was just doing what he had learned to do. He had become a professional. Come on, somebody. A religious professional. Hallelujah. His heart was disconnected from God. He believed things that were wrong, but yet he was still sounding like he was sent from the Lord, saying things with God's name in it. Come on, somebody. But he was possessed with a devil. Everything that says Jesus, come on, church, is not sent by Jesus. In Acts chapter 16, there was a woman possessed with a demon of divination. She was a sorcerer. She was a soothsayer. She soothed you when she spake. She gave you a little soothy word. She, she made you feel good. She never told you anything that would make you feel any different. Hey Amen. Because she was a merchandiser. She had to make money off of her prophecies. So she had to tell you what you wanted to hear rather than what you needed to hear at times and so she soothed the people lullabied them to sleep but when Paul and those that were with him come preaching hallelujah she said these be the men of God that show us the way of salvation look at your neighbor and say what's wrong with that that was true that was that was true because Paul was God's anointed man and he was preaching Jesus and him crucified. As Paul said, I've determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ. And him crucified, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. So she was around Paul's preaching and she heard him preaching the cross. She heard him preaching, amen, that Jesus was raised from the dead. And she told the people, these be the men of God that show us the way of salvation. And Paul was grieved. Somebody say in the spirit. And he turned to her. And when he turned to her, he didn't speak to her. He spoke to the Spirit. And he commanded the Spirit to come out of her.
And at that moment, hallelujah, those who owned her lost their gains. That means they could no longer make any money from her. Somebody shout because the devil had left her. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now hear the word of the Lord here tonight. What she said was right, but what was coming from her heart was wrong. She weren't wanting the people, hallelujah, to focus on the God of the men. She wanted the people to focus on the men of God. She was distracting the people, hallelujah, from hearing that it's the Lord, amen, and had the people focused on Paul and his followers. And when Paul understood that spirit was there trying to exalt him and magnify him, he did what the anointed do. He turned to the spirit and he rebuked it and commanded it to come out woe unto us when the preacher stands and all he does is talk about himself and talk about his ministry and talk about what he's done and what he said it's always rooted in an arrogance and a pride hallelujah glory to God so she was saying right things, but somebody shouted her motive was wrong. Her heart was wrong because it was demonic. It was demonic. So we see there's doctrines. We see even there's teachings, and, and they even use Jesus. They put a little Jesus in there to make it sound better. Hello? So beware. Somebody say beware. Beware. Amen. Because these wolves will come to you in sheep's clothing. Hallelujah. Matthew 7 and 15 declares. And there's a doctrine floating around even today in modern Pentecost. I looked at Pastor Joey's wife. The night time you opened up, and I said, Man, he's already preaching where the Holy Ghost is wanting me to go tonight. Time you got in the time you come up here. Hallelujah. When he talked about Pentecost. When he talked about the fire, hallelujah, and how some have got away from the fire. There's a false doctrine out there today, even among some Pentecostals, that believe you can be spirit-filled, but you don't have to speak with other tongues. Hello? That you don't need all that. Hallelujah. But friend, I'm just going to go ahead and boldly and come out of the gate with it. Hallelujah. Acts 2, 1 through 4 said, them, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in the same place and one accord, and there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the place where they were assembled together, and there appeared unto them cloven or divided tongues like as a fire, and they all began to speak with other tongues as they were filled. Amen. They speak with other tongues the Spirit gave them the utterance Acts 2, 1 through 4 I've met them I've, 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 I've met people and if I name some of the denominations they're respectable and so it does not cast a shadow on everybody or every preacher in those denominations but it's amazing I've met even a younger generation that are pastoring in some of these well known well respected Pentecostal amen churches and denominations uh, who are teaching the people uh, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost uh, but you don't need none of that tongue talking stuff uh, you don't have to speak in other tongues uh, look at your neighbor say I don't have to I get to uh, hallelujah friend I'm going to tell you I'm just going to come right out of the gate uh, hallelujah if you get filled Filled with the Spirit of God. When the Holy Ghost fills you, you will speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. Hallelujah. Now, I didn't say you'll be saved when you speak with other tongues. That's a false doctrine. Some believe you ain't saved until you speak with other tongues. But somebody shout, that's a lie. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7. Somebody shout, it's the blood and the blood of the lamb alone that cleanses a sinful heart and converts them into a saint. It's the blood of the lamb. You can go to heaven without having to speak with other tongues. But friend, why in the world would you want to come behind in any gift that he has purchased at Passover on his cross? Because I've come to tell you, the cost of for Pentecost uh, was paid for uh, at Passover. For Christ, uh, our Passover was sacrificed for us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. If Jesus died on the cross just to forgive your sins and leave it at that, that's what some would want us to believe. 
But 50 days later, because pity means 50, in four days it'll be 50. This coming Sunday, May the 20th, anybody here, Holy Ghost, when you celebrate your seventh year homecoming, that will be Pentecost Sunday. Anybody here, Holy Ghost, when God poured out the, the promise of his spirit on those who were gathered together in that upper room praying and seeking him, for it was the crucified, risen Christ who sat on the hillsides of Bethany before he ascended back to the right hand of the Father in Luke 20. 24, 49. He said, go tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, amen, until you be clothed with power from upon high. The Jesus that died on the cross and that was raised from the dead three days later is the same one that said, after having walked with them 40 days in his resurrected body, teaching them of the kingdom of God, just before he has sinned, it's 10 days before Pentecost, and he tells them, Go to Jerusalem, tarry, wait. That means pray and wait. I'm going to send the promise of my Father. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In Acts 2, again, 1 through 4, records that very outpouring. Verses 3, there appeared unto them cloven. That means divided tongues. Somebody say as fire. Somebody say tongues of fire. Tongues that were fervent in the spirit were birthed coming out of the mouths of the saints. The 120, Mary was one of those, the mother of Jesus, according to God's word in Acts 1 and 13. She was assembled with the women and the brethren there in that upper room as they prayed. And for 10 days they prayed. But on that glorious day, the day of Pentecost, which is not a denomination but a day, a feast day, when the saints had gathered. The power of God came from heaven and there were tongues of fire. Somebody shouting there was a rushing mighty wind and somebody say with me it filled the place before it ever did the people. It filled the house before it ever did the people. You know why some can't get an infilling that's fresh today? They're too busy at their house when it's time to be at God's house. God didn't fill the people first. He filled the house. Somebody shout, he filled the place before he filled the people. And if you want him to fill your person, you got to learn to get to the place. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another the much more as you see this day approaching. Hebrews 10, 25. This is as well a false doctrine. I don't have to go to church. I don't need a preacher. I read my Bible every day. I don't need to go to God's house. I'm saved. Look at your neighbor and say, we believe going to church won't save you but tell them say we also believe that if you get saved you're going to go to church <laughs> Jesus announced through the Hebrew writer that there's a day coming he said where some's going to have a bad manner oh the bad manners they have they have enough come on somebody don't even have enough of decency to honor him on his day they'll do anything to go to his house it is shocking to me in these latter times and he said it would be in a day when we see him approaching when that day his return is approaching he said the closer it gets you're going to find those that say they know me but they won't go to my house and they got every excuse in the world why they won't go to the place if you're not connected to a place you can forget the power come on hello somebody look at your neighbor and say the Holy Ghost filled the place before he did the people my Lord it's deception. Luke 2, 27 said, Simeon was led by the Spirit of God to the temple. Somebody say, Simeon was Holy Ghost led to where? The house of God. Brother, I'm led by the Spirit. Really? You mean you led to stay in your recliner every Sunday morning? 
Can I remind you that you used to do that before you said you were saved? How is it now you're acting like you used to before you said you got saved? The only difference is you're in a worse deception. You still think everything's okay. Come on, somebody. And here you are missing months of Sunday, amen, watching your famous, amen, television preacher, which about 95% of them, come on, are in error. Hallelujah. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? I'm telling you, beware. Beware. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? It didn't used to be that way. Used to be a time you could turn on the TV. 95% you saw was real, right? Telling you we're living in the end times. If you don't believe it, look around. Just look around. Look around the heaven. Just look. 2 Timothy 3 7 said they're ever learning but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hello? 2 Timothy. Four, I believe it is. He said they have, or Second Timothy three five. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power of, of that. From such, he, Paul said, turn away, get away from that. All they got is a form. All they got is a little figure of God. Come on, somebody, Amen. But they deny His power. They don't want nothing to do with His power. Hallelujah. Friend, we're living in that time at Pentecost. Remember this. If you don't know nothing else, remember anything I say tonight. The Holy Ghost didn't fill the people before he filled the place. He filled the place and then the people. And friend, the church today has got to get back to the place. There's things God ain't going to do in your life. There's Holy Ghost moves you're never going to know until you get dedicated to the place, to the house of the living God. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 7, God said, Not Moses, my servant who is faithful in all my house. And when you back up in verse 6, there was a lot of ministries and ministers, prophets. Prophet wants to be and prophet thinks she is. And oh, they said, Don't God talk to other people in Israel besides Moses? And God said, Surely I talk to them all. I speak to them in dreams and visions, but not my servant Moses who's faithful in all my house. Because verses 8 of Numbers 11, he said, when I get ready to talk to Moses, I speak to him in similitude, mouth to mouth and face to face. What was God saying? There were a group of people saying, God ain't no, he don't just talk to Moses, he talks to us. And God said, I do, but not like I do Moses. I talk to Moses different than I do y'all. And here's the reason. He's faithful in my house. I'm telling you, there's things that God's going to say to you. He ain't going to say to you nowhere else but in the place, in his house. Don't be deceived. Hallelujah. In Revelation 3 verses 1 it said and the angel or unto the angel the word angel there would simply mean a minister. Psalms 104 verses 4 the Bible said in the word of the Lord he makes his angel spirits a flame and fire somebody say a flame and fire I believe it was Charles Spurgeon who said, Preacher, hallelujah, get your sermon on fire or throw your sermons away in the fire. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. When you read Angel right here, uh, I want you to think uh, of a minister on fire. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout anointed uh, on fire. Uh, and God said, I got a message uh, to the messenger uh, of the church in Sardis. Uh, in Greek, Sardis' name means Prince of Joy. Hallelujah. And he said, I want you to write him a letter. And these things saith he. Somebody shout, this is in red. This is Jesus. The crucified, raised from the dead. The soon appearing, coming one. Hallelujah. He said, write these things saith he that have the seven spirits of God. 
and the seven stars. And back to Revelation 1.20, the stars were none other than the angels or the messengers. Hallelujah. That were in his hand. And he said, and I know thy works. Somebody shout, he knows their religious practices, their religious activities. Come on, somebody. This was not a good thing when he said, I know your works. Uh, it was almost a word of judgment. I, I know your works. Somebody say, our works. When he was saying that, he was saying, I know how you do church. I know how you get it done. But do you want to know how I do it? Anybody, I know your works. He didn't say, I see my spirit's works. He said, I know yours. I see your religious activities. He said, I know thy works, and thou hast a name that thou livest and are dead. Evangelist Jesus, boy, how would you like to invite him over? Here he is at the fifth church out of seven, named Sardis. This is the Pentecostal representation of the church. Sardis, somebody say Prince of Joy. The reason I say that, Acts 13 and 52 said the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost. So if Sardis' name means Prince of Joy, she was the Pentecostal church. Come on now. Hallelujah. She was the one that used to know the fire because Jesus is now accusing her, saying your name says you still got it, but you've died. You're dead. How would you like evangelist Jesus uh, to show up? He wouldn't necessarily make your church grow at first. Uh, hallelujah. Because every church needs a good bowel movement. Uh, there might be a divine running off that would take place uh, before there would come a growth. Uh, anybody here, Holy Ghost, uh, Praise the Lord God. Because Jesus come in and said, your name looks good. Your name says you got it. Your name says it's there. But I've come to tell you, you're dead. You used to have it. And notice who's talking. He said, I'm the one that has the seven spirits of God. Now, some have tried to debate and say these seven spirits is, is really the expression of God's Holy Ghost from Isaiah 11 and 2 where God speaks in this Messianic prophecy about Jesus that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. You find seven revelations of one Holy Ghost. Not seven Holy Ghosts. One Holy Ghost expressing himself. And you could go there if you want to. Hallelujah. But listen. The seven spirits of God, and we know the word number, the number seven is very significant. Many understand it to be complete. Hallelujah. But I would want to call it fullness here tonight in this revelation because God, when he said the seven spirits of God, he was talking about the fullness of his spirit. Somebody say the fullness. The stars or the messengers with the message that's on fire. He's talking about a full gospel. He, come on, somebody, somebody shout, Jesus is the one who has the fullness of the spirit. Jesus is the one who came declaring the full gospel. He didn't stop. Come on at Passover. He went on and showed them about, hallelujah, Pentecost that was coming. And friend, the only church, you better hear it. It may offend you, but the only church Jesus ever began and ever birthed was Acts chapter 2. Tongue talking, devil evicting, dead body raising, body healing, sin hating, soul loving, soul winning church. They were birthed in the fire. Before they ever preached to anybody, you heard them speaking in tongues of fire. Before they ever saw a sign or a wonder, Brother Jeff, you heard them speaking with other tongues, a fiery tongue. Oh, before they cast out one devil, they were heard speaking with other tongues. Before they ever raised one dead body, they were heard speaking with other tongues. Oh, anybody here, Holy Ghost, I ain't ashamed of him. I've come to tell you, whatever you do, Lifeline Ministries, this is your seventh year of completion, and God wants you to know, hold on to the fullness. Don't let no doctrine of demons, don't let nothing keep you from the seven spirits of God. The fullness of his Pentecostal power. And I knew it took me a while to get there, but that's what he sent me here. I tell you, his church was birthed in this. 
You know, during Moses' day, he had a tabernacle made out of sheep and goat skins, a tent. Hello? And the altar was bronze. It was a brazen altar. Many years later, here come wise man Solomon, son of David. He was a wealthy man. God blessed him because he asked for wisdom. And so he upgrades the order. And he makes temples of beautiful stones, expensive stones. And he makes an altar out of pure, fine gold. But listen what he did. He kept the priest in there every morning according to the command of God. Because the lamp in the temple, it was a command never to let it go out. You know what? Solomon may have been richer than Moses as far as monetary. Hallelujah. He may have even upgraded the things of God, but he didn't become like the church at Laodicean who said in Revelation 3.17, we are rich and have need of nothing. Somebody shout the order. May have went from being bronze to gold. Oh, from sheep and goat skins, the tabernacle, to precious stones. But he kept the fire. I don't care how blessed you get. You better keep the fire. Ah, it don't matter how much he prospers you you better stay in the altar you better hold on to the fire his church is one on fire Job 5 and 7 said as sparks fly upward somebody say heat rises look at your neighbor and say Jesus ain't coming back for a cold bride he ain't coming back for a cold girlfriend he coming back for a hot mama. He coming back for a hot bride. She's on fire, on fire. Holy Ghost sent me here to tell somebody tonight, whatever you do, don't you lose the fire of God. It don't matter. I've seen churches do it. They start getting blessed. God starts giving them stuff and favor comes. And then just like we do, hallelujah, after we eat a Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving Thursday, we lay back and relax. And go right to sleep. There's some gold coming. But keep the fire, says the Lord. Matter of fact, there's a lot of gold coming. Ooh, glory to God. But the silver and gold is mine, saith the Lord. Hey, God, two and eight, but don't you ever trade in the fire. I've seen ministries destroyed, churches destroyed, who were birthed in the flames of Pentecost. But along the way, trying to fit into today's culture and society, trying to upgrade, oh, for the sake of reaching somebody. And then they start editing out stuff. They start editing out, casting the devil out of people. That's one of the fat latest fads. You used to see that everywhere. Oh, but now they want to edit the cross. It's too gross, too gross. They want to edit out tongues. They want to edit out the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I've come to charge you prophetically by the Spirit of God. Lifeline ministries. Don't you ever edit out a thing the Holy Ghost is doing because God didn't raise this ministry up. Hallelujah. To edit out anything. He wants to show the world he has power over all devils. Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. Matthew 12, 28. Jesus said, I can't even cast the devil out without the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, that means there's no power over demons without the Holy Ghost. Don't you dare ever get to the place Where when you hear God's word, you stop responding to it. These churches has become cold and indifferent. And they just come to watch a show. Come on, somebody. And to listen to a little teaching. Ever learning, but can't come to the knowledge of the truth. Second Timothy 3, 7. Somebody shout, ever learning, but never burning. They good at learning. Oh, but are sorry at catching on fire. 
they can't get to the knowledge of the truth because 1 John 2 27 amen says amen glory to God the anointing which you have of him abides in you and you have no need that any man teach you but the same anointing that is in you which is the truth and not a lie even as it has taught you so shall you abide in him somebody shout in Christ there's an anointing are we really showing the world this Jesus because if we're preaching this Jesus there's an anointing from the Holy Ghost that should be showing up because the anointing we receive of him you can't preach this Jesus and Holy Ghost power not come to manifest and he said when that anointing comes you have no need that any man teach you that don't mean you don't need a man that you don't need a preacher but what he's showing us here you can teach the truth, but if you do it without the anointing, without the power of the Holy Ghost, the people can be ever learning but never know who it is they're learning about. Never come into an intimate encounter with the one they're learning about. Friend, didn't I just describe, hallelujah, a lot of ministries and churches today, they go there out of religious duty. It's a drudge. They go there because it's the appointed time to go. They sit there, and before they sit down, they're wondering how long the preacher's going to preach, how long the song service is going to be. Hallelujah. They're more in-depth concerned about about what they're going to do, hallelujah, after it's all over with, than they are about what is going on in the present. Friend, I'm telling you, we're living in that day where Matthew 24 and verse 13 is coming to pass, where God said the love, or verse 12, a minute shall wax cold, growing cold, hallelujah. Verse 13 said, but he that endureth to the end, the same will be saved. What's that mean? Somebody shout, he that preserves the power. He that stays on fire. Look at your neighbor say, whatever you do, you better finish with fire because heat rises. He ain't come back for a cold bunch. Come on. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? We got preachers today posing as preachers. All they got, only degree they got is 32 below, chilly willy degrees. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, God set me on fire. Set me on fire, and when the people come, let them come to watch me burn. Hallelujah. I begin to cry out in my office today. I said, Holy Ghost, I don't care if I'm ever a prince of preachers. I don't even care if I'm a word of God, a wordsmith in a pulpit before great crowds. God, whoever does come, let them get ignited. Help them get on fire. Let it be caught. Make me flammable. Somebody lift your hands and say, Holy Ghost, make me flammable. I'm preaching to somebody tonight that Psalms 42 and 2 reveals. It's also found in Matthew 12 and 20 in the New Testament. It said a smoking flax he won't quench. Somebody say a candle that's just got some smokes. Brother Jeff, you'll like this because you used to say it all the time. I don't know if you still do. You'd say holy smokes. Just a little bit of holy smoke. I could sense in the spirit this afternoon. I can tell you what time it was. It was 3.31 p.m. I could sense in my office as I was crying out to the Lord. Brother Jeff, I could see smoke. I could see smoke coming from people. Smoke. I could see little embers that were still a little bit red. And I could see me coming with what God was sending me to preach tonight. And I began to blow as the breath of his mouth come through my mouth. And I saw the little embers catching flame. Hey, somebody here, what you've been going through has about made you get burnt out. But I've come to tell you tonight, Holy Ghost says if I can see some smoke signals. Come on, if you can raise your hand a little bit and give him a smoke signal. He's coming through this auditorium right now. He's coming through this congregation right now. He's going through these camera lenses right now. And I prophesy fire, a fresh fire. Holy Ghost sets you ablaze for him again. Sardis used to know the power. He 
Jesus said, your name says you're alive, but you're dead. So he told him, verse 2, be watchful. Somebody shout, get back to praying. You better strengthen what remains because it's ready to die too. He said, I've not found your works. Perfect, perfect would mean full or completely full before God. He's talking about fullness everywhere. He's talking about the seven spirits of God. Some might say full, full. He said, verse 3, remember. Well, how you've received and heard and hold fast and repent. In other words, remember how it was when you first got saved. Remember how, hey man, when you first turned your life over to God. Remember the fire. Somebody look at your neighbor say, don't forget the fire. If I had a subtitle to this title tonight, the seven spirits of God, it would be that. Don't forget the fire. I've come to tell you. I've come to tell all of you. Hey man, on this seventh anniversary, hallelujah. Don't forget the fire. Keep it. Hallelujah. And he said to him, he said, remember how you received and heard. And he said, hold fast. Get it back. Hold on to what you got. He said, repent. That means turn back and get what you've lost. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief. And thou shalt know what hour I will come, you will not know what hour I'll come unto thee. He said, you've had a few names. That means there's a few persons, even in Sardis. Somebody shout, he's still got a remnant. I thought about it today in Luke 12, 32. Jesus said, he said, fear not, little flock, for it's my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He called his people a little flock. Somebody shout, he's still got a little flock. That means there's a remnant. That word remnant means there's, some, there's a residue of people left. There's still somebody left that still believes it takes Holy Ghost. God's called me tonight to come here and tell Lifeline Ministries, stay that part of the remnant. Stay a part of that remnant because it's wasting. I'm telling you Pentecost is under attack. The fire of the Holy Ghost is under assault like it's never been by these professional preachers and these preacher specialists. Hey man, come on somebody. Don't go to sleep. Don't lose the fire. Don't forget the fire. Somebody give him a holy smoke tonight. Let him reunite you and reunite you with that flame and that passion you had when you first met him. You remember when you first got saved? One little slip of hallelujah from Sister Lulu, two pews down. Now the preacher can preach 30 minutes after the choir has sung 45 minutes and you still ain't even stirred with as much as a pad of your foot. Back in the day, somebody just said, Jesus, you're like, whoa! Hey! Somebody shout, that's what happens when you get close to fire. I ain't never seen nobody back up to a good hot fire. On a chilly cold morning, oh, not knowing that their britches legs was getting on fire, but their britches legs weren't touching their skin just yet. Then all of a sudden they made a little shift or a move. Oh, whoa. Hey. Some of you, that's how close you used to be. It didn't take much to it. It didn't give didn't take much to get you leaping, running, jumping, stomping. Now we're having to beg people to the altar and the move. I dare somebody look at somebody and go. Hey. Listen, Exodus 12. Exodus 12, one of my favorite stories, the Passover. Sometimes people pass over the Passover. There's all kind of stuff in there. First of all, Christ is our Passover and he was sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Thank you, Jesus. 
That was the cost for Pentecost. Blood purchased my right to experience that fire. I won't let no denomination, no doctrine of demons, no creeds of any religion tell me the Holy Ghost is any different now than he was then. Because it's by the manifestation of the Spirit. Hallelujah that we profit. First Corinthians 12, 7. Somebody shout any profit, any glory to God, prestige, any positions of notoriety, any promotions that come any other way except in the fire of God. I don't want them. If you don't come by the fire, I don't want it. Exodus 12 verses 8 God told Moses tell the people of God he said when you take this lamb and prepare it for this night of deliverance because the death angel is going to come through here and whoever hadn't applied this blood of this perfect lamb on the door lentils of their house death's going to come in and take their firstborn but if I see the blood of this lamb I'll pass over and God gave specific instructions. He said, serve the lamb. Somebody say, serve the lamb. Roast it. Somebody say, serve him on fire. Serve him hot. Somebody say, a hot lamb. Oh, glory to God. He said, whatever you do, don't water or sodden this lamb now with water. Roast him with fire at night, eating your herbs and your unleavened bread. Somebody say, serve him on fire. Jesus didn't come and die on that cross so we could serve him cold religion on Sunday mornings and go through a little format, a little religious structure that denies his Holy Ghost power that's dead. Come, Jesus didn't die for that church. That ain't the church he died for. He died for a church that would serve him roasted, serve him hot, serve him on fire. There ain't but one way to serve Jesus, and that's all on fire that's hot but some of you have let your night seasons you've let the bitter herbs of life you've allowed the unleavened bread which is the unpleasant things in life to take your fire and to water the lamb that should be on fire down but I've come to tell you tonight if you'll get on fire and serve the lamb you'll overcome your night hallelujah he'll turn this bitter into sweet he'll make that that's unpleasant become his pleasure Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Somebody say, serve him hot. I'm going to close here. Hebrews 11, or Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing that we are so compassed about with a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets us. And let us run with patience this race that's been set before us. Somebody say, lay aside. Somebody say, every weight. Look at your neighbor say, it's time to lose weight. Stay in the spirit. Anything that's weighing me down in the spirit. Anything that's keeping me from putting him first. I'm preaching to some weighty saints tonight. Sometimes we get so concerned about the flesh. Hello, and I could do to lose some weight in the flesh. Amen. Something happens when gravity and age come together. I, I, hallelujah, smell food and gain three pounds. Hallelujah. Let your neighbor say, that's a joke. You can't smell and gain. The smell don't have the calories. Like Brother Jeff used to say when he was taking that second milkshake, I'm eating this about like I do a hole in my head. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about the spirit. What weighs you down? What keeps you from praising him like you used to? What keeps you from obeying him like you used to? Somebody say, lay it aside. 
you're running out of time. You better lay it aside. And he said, even the sins, because if you don't lay that weight aside, it's going to cause you to take on sins and to take up sin. The weight will make you eventually commit sin. What sin? Somebody say disobedience. Because Acts 5.32 said, we're witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Who does God give Holy Ghost to? Somebody say, those who obey him. That's who he gives Holy Ghost to. So he said, lay them aside. And he said, run this race with endurance, with patience. It's been set before you. But he started off saying, see this great cloud of witness. Look at all those that have gone on before you who finished with fire. Paul was teaching what he was teaching about a race here. It's kind of like our Olympic races today where one passes on a lit on fire baton to the next and they run on with the fire. And in Paul's day it was kind of singular. It weren't who ended the race first that won. The one who ended the race with his torch still on fire was considered a winner. Hello. I'm telling you, there's an enemy loose and he's trying to knock the fire out of the church. He's trying to take it out of the pulpits and he has succeeded many places. But I've come again tonight with a prophetic charge. Whatever you do, lay aside anything that's keeping the fire out of your life. Lay it aside because Jesus is coming and he rises. He's coming back for a glorious church that don't have spot or wrinkle or any blemish, any such thing. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 527 the blood of his cross is what gets the spots and the sin stains out but friend it's the fire of Pentecost the heat the fire of God that irons the wrinkles and he's not coming back for a wrinkled bride is he Holy Ghost our God is as a consuming fire Lord, there's one thing I know about your fire. It will not come. It's not attracted anywhere or into anyone that's unwilling to let you have all of them. Because when your fire comes, it comes to consume. You're the spirit of burning, Isaiah 4.4. 4. Come on, lift your hands to him, saints. Spirit of God. Come and burn, burn, burn. Come and consume, come and consume. Spirit of burning, come and burn. Spirit of burning, come, my beloved. Consume me anew. Lord, fill me with that first love flame. Holy Ghost, give me a fresh passion for your name. Come on, let him set you on fire. Come on, give him a smoke signal tonight. Let him blow. Come on, let him blow on them smoking embers. Spirit of burning, come, my beloved. Deuteronomy 4 and 24. He said, for I'm a jealous God, even a consuming fire. Brother Marvin, he used to be first in my life. That's why he said, remember, in Revelation 3, to a church that used to have to a person and a people that used to have. There's some of you in here, they still enough a holy smoke coming up from you, even from your childhood and the way you was raised around the fire of God. Holy Ghost wants somebody to know tonight I've not left you. 
And I'm not wanting to leave you out either. Come and let me rekindle that flame. Come, 2 Timothy 1, 6. Uh, stir up, fan the flame, stir up the gift of God. Hallelujah in you. Oh, somebody, you've been missing the fire. Oh, he's been missing setting you on fire too. Holy Spirit of burning, come. Quench not the spirit. First Thessalonians 5, 19. Don't extinguish him. Don't water the lamb down. Roast him tonight. Come on, say, Holy Ghost. Help me to serve Jesus hot. Holy Ghost, help me to serve Jesus hot. Set me on fire. Hallelujah. Oh. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. Give me a new desire. Help me serve the Lamb hot. Shatana ma shiribo kurimena bahaya. Ain't you tired of cold cuts? Don't you want a hot steak? Don't you want a hot meal? Oh. I'm telling you, a cold cut sandwich sometimes is all right, but they ain't nothing like a hot meal. The meat that he wants in his house is off of the flames of God's grill. Oh, hallelujah. Holy, set me on fire. Brother Marvin, what's my prayer life need? Fire. James 5 and 16. Confess your thoughts one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent. Prayer of a righteous man avails much. Fervent means boiling. Boiling on fire. Romans 12 and 11 says don't be slothful in business. But fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Fervent means boiling. Boiling. Somebody, you need to shout until you start boiling again. Somebody, you need to scream out to Jesus in prayer tonight on his altar until you start boiling over. Come on. Stay in these altars until you boil over. Oh, Lord, until the cup runs over. How does the cup run over? Psalms 23 and 5. Because there's a heat that gets under the pot. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, an old-fashioned tea kettle, when it gets hot enough, it'll let off some steam and a sound. <laughs> Somebody shout when you get hot for God again. You'll get your worship whistle back. You'll get your praise back. That's why some can't shout no more. They've lost the fire. Come on, get back on the altar. Climb up on it tonight and say, God, I die.